let's have a look at question four. So a drop of temperature of five degrees. So that tells me they're dropping, so they're going down. Um, results equals a temperature of negative 14. And what was the original? So if I think about it in terms of my number line, it's going to end up at a temperature of negative 14 degrees. Now to get there, they dropped, they went down by five degrees. So we don't want to know what was the original amount. So I could just do the reverse of this and add 5 up and that would take me to negative 9. So in terms of my working I'm going to say negative 14 degrees plus 5 degrees gives me negative 9 degrees. So here we've got our two scores. So in his French test Sam scored 28 out of 40. So let's, to compare numbers, it's always harder when they're fractions, so let's turn them either into decimal or a percentage. So let's start by simplifying that fraction first of all. So we want to find lowest common factor, oh sorry, highest common factor of 28 and 40. So the highest common factor will be 4, so if I divide top and bottom by 4, then that will give me 7 out of 10. So to turn that into a decimal, well it's already in tenths, which is quite handy. So that's going to be 0 0.7, or if I want that as a percentage, that would be 70%. So that's our French test. Now let's see how he did in his English test. So in his English test, he got a score of 15 out of 21. So we've got to ask, what's the highest common factor of 15 and 21? And the answer is 3. So let's divide top and bottom by 3. So that will give us 5 over 7. Now that's not going to be quite so nice to convert um, to a decimal, so we're going to have to do this the long way. So I want to know how many times does 7 go into 5, and I can put as many zeros as I like. So 7's into 5 I can't, but 7's into 50. Well 7 times 7 is 49, so that would give me a remainder of 1. 7's into 10 is 1 with a remainder of 3. 7's into 30 would be 7 4's are 28, so that's a remainder of 2, and so on. So I'm going to leave my decimal there. So that as a decimal is 0 0.714, and that's to 3 decimal places. And I can either leave it in that to compare, or I can convert to a percentage, which would be 71.4%. So the question is, which test did he score better in? And his best score was his English test. Let's have a look at this one. So Sally works after school each day for four hours. So that's after school, school's five days a week, and she works four hours each day, so that would be 20 hours. Then on Saturday and Sunday, so two days, she works six hours. So two days she works six hours, so that is 12 hours. So altogether she works 32 hours every week. Now if she earns $8.75 an hour, we want to find that total income. So her total income is the 32 hours times $8.75 per hour. So we're going to need to do a bit of multiplying. So 8.75 times 32. 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15, 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1 is 17. Then we need to do the 3, so put a 0 in that end column. 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 1 is 22. And 3 times 8 is 24 plus 2 is 26. Add that up, and that gives us that number. Now we've got to find where the decimal goes, so there's one, two values after the decimal point, so that's where I'm going to put my decimal there. So that is going to be $280 per week. Now Amy sends 480 texts per week, and 300 of those are to her best friend. I want to know what percentage of this it is. So 300 out of 480. So the first thing we want to do is simplify that fraction. So 
I'm going to start by saying, right, let me just divide top and bottom by 10. That will give me 30 over 48. Already that's better to deal with, but I still need to simplify this further. So let's now think 30 and 48. What's the highest common factor? Which is 6. So let's divide top and bottom by 6. And that will give me 5 over 8. Okay, not a particularly nice answer, so we're going to do our division. So how many times does 8 go into 5? And I can have as many zeros as I want. So 8's into 5 I can't, but 8's into 50 goes, 8 times 6 is 48, so that would give me a remainder of 2. 8's into 20 is 2 with a remainder of 4. 8's into 40 is 5. My decimal just goes straight above. And so as a decimal, that would be 0 0.625, but the question asks what percentage, so that's going to be 62.5%. Let's have a look at E here. So Maddie's phone costs 56% more than Amy's phone. So if Amy spent $180, let's find out how much is 56% of $180. So I can write that as 180 times 56 over 100, turn it into a fraction. Now that's going to be the same as 180 times 56 all divided by 100. So before I multiply all these big numbers, let's just do a bit of simplifying. So 180 over 100, I can divide that both by 10. That will take me down to 18 over 10. Now can I divide any further? Well, yes, I could still divide top and bottom by 2. So if I do 18 divided by 2, that would give me 9. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that's the same as 9 times 56 all divided by 5. So the numbers are a little bit nicer. But I'm still going to need to do some multiplying. So let's do that. 9 times 56. In fact, let's do 56 times 9. So 9 times 6 is 54 and 9 times 5 is 45 plus 5 is 50. So that's going to give me 504 over 5. So now I need to do some division. How many 5s in 504? So 5s into 5s is 1, 5 into 0 is 0, 5 into 4, oh I can't do that so I need to put some extra zeros in here. 5s into 40, okay well 5s into 40 is Eight. Put my decimal in there, and that's a hundred point eight, or a hundred dollars and eighty cents. So that's how much fifty-six percent is. But remember, Maddie's cost fifty-six percent more. So that means Maddie's phone cost the hundred and eighty dollars plus this a hundred dollars and eighty cents, and that would give a total of two hundred and eighty dollars and eighty cents.